Not gonna lie, I look at this title and I just go... See, I look at it and I'm like, ooh, we're going to a winery? <laughs> this episode's called Sideways. <laughs> so it's like, oh, there's so many ways you could take this, most of them sideways. You know, I've never actually seen that movie. Neither have I. <laughs> I've only ever seen the poster because I think one of my teachers at one point had it hanging in their classroom. I don't remember who or what level of education. <laughs> I just remember thinking anytime I've gone wine tasting in the past, I should really see that movie sideways. And then usually after the amount of wine that I drink, I completely forget about that. <laughs> By I mean, the time wine tasting's over. <laughs> the only time I've been wine tasting, I was the designated driver. Well, that's not fun. Well, I chose to do that because I don't like most wines. And then by the point everyone had sobered up, they're like, all right, our last one is a dessert flight. And I'm like, one of y'all motherfuckers is driving. <laughs> We're going to a winery that's known for really sweet wine. Mm -mm -mm, I'm not driving on this one. See, we have been to 10 of them. Let me have one. <laughs> oh. Well, I yeah. apologize. Clearly wine tasting is not your thing. Eh. <laughs> I still had a good time. But the other thing I think of uh, looking at sideways, besides a movie I've never seen, um... It were like I'm reminded of that fight in Ruby, the gravity fight between Watts and Ironwood, where it's everything's like, just upside down, bouncing off the ceiling, and also <laughs> counting. <laughs> I appreciate you're not the only one that can count. Like, oh, thank you, basic skills. Yeah. Um. So exciting. I do have to be honest about this one. I received an accidental spoiler today. Uh, broad strokes for someone who was attempting to warn for something and I think went a little too far in the wrong direction. So I have an idea of something that happens, but I have no context and no idea who's involved. So it's like, I don't really have a spoiler so much as I have centralized anxiety. So And I haven't been spoiled, but now all. I'm concerned. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like, okay! Can, can I ask? It's not like trigger warning type content, is it? No. Okay. No. Okay. It, it's, it, yeah. Because trying to warn for something, I was like, uh, like, it's, it's lots, different if you're giving a trigger people, warning for people. Lots of people warn for lots of different things. I had a number of people warn me for spiders before that episode of The Mandalorian, like, specifically, <laughs> we're gonna talk about it, by the way, spiders, and I'm like, shit, that tells me everything I need to know. Yeah, and I listen to a lot of, um, horror fiction podcasts, and they always provide content, specific content warnings, like, for specific triggers, um, yeah. and descriptions of every episode, which I applaud them for, and I think more things should do that, but if you, if that's not a worry for you, then you don't have to look yeah. at it. You don't yeah. have to worry about being spoiled. No, this, you know? this was not a warning for a okay. sort of thing. The, like, that's why, like, I got concerned. <laughs> sorry, no, sorry. <laughs> I got concerned when you said someone was trying to warn about the episode, and so I'm like, Oh, God. <laughs> no, 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 no. What happened? Uh, stuff and things, yeah. I guess. Okay. Stuff and also things. Okay, so as long as it's not a trigger warning, then I'm good to go. <laughs> yeah, and um, I'm obviously not going to give any predictions because, Please, again, I have pinpoint anxiety for this one. It's, Just, uh, it's fun. I mean, the only thing I'll say is that with a title like Sideways, if we're going to get an episode describing the relationship between East and Phase, this might be one in which that would happen. Uh, the longer this series goes on, the more I think your <laughs> your your out there theory about them being clones or, or like sisters or, or a copy or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, uh, the more and more I'm like, damn, Katie called that immediately. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, what's the Echo? And I'm like, Echo is the character that can copy everyone's up. No. But, um, yeah. Um, and apart from that, maybe we see Tucker. And that's, I mean, that's all I got. My other prediction is I want Junior. Because well, they're, they're like, hey! Because they're like, we have to go save Tucker. And I'm like, oh shit, I need Junior. Give it to me. Washington so we'll Carolina we'll fight. Washington Carolina Maybe fight. that! Alright. Anyway. Before we get this party started, this episode is sponsored by Fred He Bakes. Cookies, guys. Cookies are good. Cookies are good for this, for this season, for centralized anxiety, for, you know, all of those wonderful things. And they're just good in general. 
Uh, Fred does several different kinds of cookies. He does the brown sugar buddy, which is like a cross between a ginger snap and a spice cookie, and it's unbelievably good, and it's chewy, and it's soft, and these are incredible, and I love them. Uh, if you would like more fall flavors in your brown sugar buddy, he does maple brown sugar buddies, which are just, guys, put them in your, dip them in your hot winter drink of choice. They are phenomenal, no matter which one you choose. And if you're not really a spice cookie fan, if you're more of a chocolate chip cookie person, he's got you covered there. He has the big mm. chip buddies. They are huge. They are soft. They are packed with chocolate chips. They're a lot more difficult to dip into your winter drink of choice because of their size, unless you use like one of those really big mugs, which no judgment, man. Sometimes you really need that in the morning, <laughs> but highly recommend. And if you're like me and you want a little bit of everything, he also does a couple of different sampler boxes. So you can try a little bit of everything and then order more of the thing you like, which is, if you're like me, is all of them. <sighs> yeah, yeah, Dream, dreaming about them cookies. Mm -hmm. and good cookies. They are all made fresh to order. They are never frozen. Uh, you will not find these in stores. You will only find them at fredhebakes.com. It's three words, fredhebakes.com. And while you're there, you can use coupon code Kia Cookies for 20% off your entire order. fredhebakes.com, coupon code Kia Cookies for 20% off your entire order. Do the thing, win the stuff, treat yourself, and also they make real good holiday gifts, so you should totally do that. Support small businesses. Brown sugar buddies for you. Big chip buddies for me. Uh, spreads and jams at a later date. And sampler boxes for your friends. Yay! Yay! And everyone wins. Yes. Alrighty. Let's go. Uh, Red versus Blue Season 18. Red versus Blue Zero. RVB Zero. It's got like five <laughs> titles. I can't keep them straight. Episode 5. Sideways. Click. I swear I can't do this without heckin' with the volume in one way or another. Is it too quiet? Is it too loud? Will the camera pick it up? The camera will pick it up. I very much enjoy this intro. Oh, yeah. It's a good time. God, these episodes are all so short. How long is this one? Less than 13 minutes. Wow. Yeah. 12.49. Okay. Including opening theme and credits. So like 11 minutes, yeah. 11 That's 49. a Steven Universe episode. <laughs> well, they're longer than they used to be. Five minutes. Oh, no, no, no. It's not Chris. My first name is Lavernius. Yeah, that's better. It is. It's real. And it's a family name, so show some respect. I'm your instructor today, and I know things. Things you could all learn. <laughs> So, learn them. Well said. Okay, you know what, soldier? Have you ever saved the universe? Show of hands. Who here has saved the universe? I used to work at a school I and... I donate to environmental causes. Time or money? Time. Get out of here. You don't have what it takes. <laughs> I saved the universe once. And oh, I feel that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so much. It just saves itself and you get all the credit. Like Indiana Jones. He didn't save the world. He was just there. They would have opened up the ark and died either way. We've <laughs> <laughs> had this conversation. <laughs> no one helped me do it. There is nothing wrong with having this conversation. I think say, everyone does. I'm, I'm fairly certain, like, it's a cracked article or something. <laughs> Everything is a cracked article. Minions coming from? Did they just come with a sword? Oh no, not the trainees! Also, I thought Tucker was retired, so what is this? I don't know. What is this? I have no idea. I have no idea where we are or who these people are, but. Are they though? That's him! That's zero! You three, get Tucker out of here now. All other objectives are secondary. Axel and I will take care of zero. <laughs> hey! Go get him, Shadow Squad. On it! 
That was weird. <laughs> <laughs> that was very Sentai. We have we have teamwork, honey. Already. Uh oh. She's the echo. The echo is fading. Yeah, no, she ain't real. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's go. Worth it, Patrick Bow Wow. Honey, you're better than that. At least have a pickup line. <laughs> hey, girl, hey. <laughs> That's not a pickup line. No, no, he's gotten lazy. <laughs> That's true. Figures he can coast off of being the savior of the universe or something. <laughs> That's true. If I save your universe. I can fight. Let's push through. No, it's too risky. Here, there are combat vehicles on the north side. We'll take those. Where what? are they? I like that guitar. Oh, good music. Catches rockets? Tucker, did you just try to slide on the hood of the warhead? <laughs> <Minecraft? laughs> I'll go after them myself. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just gonna stab an engine, I'm sure it'll work super well oh. after that. You know what? If I could do that with there being no like consequences, <laughs> you would. I would teleport everywhere. Oh absolutely. Oh, I don't like that at all. Hello, it's another daddy death flag. <laughs> yeah. Oh dear. Oh, come on. <laughs> like, I know the sword is capable of that, but I'm still angry at it. <laughs> you know? Entire sword. I'm not gonna lie, autonomous flying shark object. Not great. Oh, thanks. I hate it. None of it. I rhymes. love it though. <laughs> <laughs> it's just none of it rhymes. And the mongoose just keeps going, it's fine. Sure! <laughs> I'm being sure! <laughs> oh, what is this? From now I on, this. I only want to travel by night. <laughs> I feel like that might cause problems. <laughs> In more ways than one. <laughs> that was dope. Nice. <laughs> and knife throw and... Uh-oh. Yep. 
Uh oh. Oh, jeez. to feel good. It wasn't bad. The last key, the ultimate power will finally be mine. I don't think he's Boss. dead. I mean, I'll believe it when they turn it on, you know? Yeah. Boss! It's the ultimate source of power in the universe. Whoever wields it and it's mine! Unstoppable. Mine! <laughs> Please be the flood. Please so be the flood. To no one. Why do you need more power at all? I have given you everything, and now you question me. I have offered you a chance to avenge the little girl your father abandoned. Do not make me regret it. Now, let's prepare for the final temple. You can either help me shape the universe. Or go out there and be on your own. Again. It's entirely up to you. Blood, Halo Ring. Yeah, the thing I got spoiled for was just warning character death. Ah! So. But yeah, I also won't believe it until we see that sword activated by someone who isn't oh, him. Especially since, it. oh, stabbed in the gut must be Tuesday. <laughs> it's like, wait, betrayed and stabbed in the gut? Yeah, if he were dead, we would have seen that sword light up. Uh, yeah. He's fine. Well, maybe not <laughs> fine. As fine he's as you probably can. not fine. <laughs> he's been slightly stabbed. <laughs> as fine as you can be. While being While yeah. being stabbed. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean they're at some form of facility. They've got to have some medical officer somewhere. Like Yeah. Yeah. I think Again, I'll believe it when I see someone else activate that sword. Say, I think 
Katie, you should go ahead and pat yourself on the For back. For calling that shit, <laughs> pick up the phone. You called it super early, and I, there's a podcast where I'm like, that's pretty out there, Katie. <laughs> Honestly, I think you're crazy. <laughs> when was the first time they mentioned the echo? I um, think it was episode it was, three, and that wasn't too long ago. It was only two episodes ago. It's so honestly, it feels like a lifetime ago. <laughs> well, yeah, that's just twenty twenty. Twenty twenty. <laughs> so I'm like, Katie, call that at the beginning of the season, not two episodes ago. <laughs> It was either episode two or episode three. Whenever they first mentioned the, echo, I think it was episode I, three. But time, it is was the episode where days. they picked wash up because they took the yeah. bait. How's the echo doing? Et yeah, 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 yeah. And I think that was three. I think you're right. <laughs> yeah, because two ended on the cliffhanger with the fight between the three of them, the three, Carolina and yeah. East and one. But like I said. Pat yourself on the back. Bitch. You called it. <laughs> Here's the phone. <laughs> ring, uh, ring, motherfucker. Yeah, no, well done. Well done. I mean, they straight up called, they're like, oh, how's the echo? Oh, it's holding up. I'm like, okay, they're, mm hmm, mm hmm, mm hmm, yep. It was more picking up what they put down, because <laughs> they definitely put it down. So. Ah. <sighs> Yeah, he's not dead till that sword lights up for some. Oh else. yeah, no, he's That's, fine. Uh, we've we've had that beaten into our heads enough by this series, and also we're in denial because Blood Gulch plot armor. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm not gonna lie. That's a component of it. <laughs> it really is. It's like okay, you're gonna take out one of the Blood Gulch crew, and you're gonna do it like that, like that. Really. That being said. I do really want to see a sword fight between Zero and Tucker. <laughs> like, now that he's learned a little bit more than swish swish stab. <laughs> but yeah, I want I it. want him to also say that and swish, then kill Zero. Yes! <laughs> I mean, let's be real, it's probably going to be one who does the honors. Given what I was spoiled for, I was so sure Axel was gonna die at this point. <laughs> I was like, oh, there's them daddy death flags. No. 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 I mean, there's still a couple episodes left. <laughs> this Axel could still bite it. This it felt like I, I just. There are some parts of it where I just sit here and I get real fucking confused. Like, y'all saw it. What's that? What the hell is that? Who are they? Where are they? So yeah, the basics of the scene. Like, I love the fight choreography. Don't get me oh, wrong. Oh yeah, yeah. I think this is all well animated and just. None of it rhymes. Like there was some really great stuff There's... in here, but the basics of the scene were so lost on me that it threw me for some of these. There's a like the dialogue's good, the um the beats are good, the fort fight choreography and all of the effects really really good. We've already talked about like the um overly dramatic and you know, hand gestures yeah, and how that yeah, doesn't necessarily yeah. sync up with the line deliveries. I kind of like that they lampshaded it a little bit in this episode with the whole Sentai. Right! That was, that was weird. weird. <laughs> I kind of like teamwork. That. Welcome to being all on the same page. <laughs> I, I very much appreciated that Sentai right. But um, I think... What this episode, and to an extent what the previous episode, um, what it struggles with is establishing certain things. Like, um, in the previous episode, when, when, like, we get to see the aliens for the first time, it felt like it came out of nowhere, because we didn't get... We didn't get to see Zero be like, oh, well, it's okay, like, that you... Say it's hello okay. to my little friend and it's, waving the sword and suddenly... Well, like, 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 I don't need friends like you anymore when I have friends like these. Like, that would have been an excellent way to establish those bad guys. And same thing here. We see Tucker, and we see him talking to people, and these are probably details that are in the script of, like, exterior... Like, but um, like, I would have taken. We, I, I feel like Red vs. Blue has done this before, and my entire brain is just right now, so I could be wrong. But the little, the, the lower thirds, yeah, in the bottom left, establishing location, location and, and time. time. 
Um, there's that, or you could establish it within a line of dialogue, or yeah. even within, like, have a sign, like an establishing shot next to the sign of this facility yeah. saying what it is. Because um, this seems like he's going to be training people in combat skills, and that really doesn't jive with the everyone retired but wash. Yeah. Like, that doesn't look like retirement. We know what Tucker's retirement plans would look like, and these aren't they. So, I, I think what what right now, like I said, this episode and the previous one struggle with a little bit is just establishing... Where the hell are we? An establishing shot. <laughs> yeah. um, because when those guys in those fancy suits showed up, I'm like... Who the fuck? Yeah, I don't think a I, anybody has any context for who they are, what they do, what side they're on. Unless there's some Halo stuff that I just am completely unaware of. Because I fully admit, oh. my Halo lore knowledge pretty much begins and ends with Halo 2. <laughs> but I've, I've never seen those models before. I've never yeah. seen that armor before. And they just kind of showed up and went up against Zero. And I'm like, okay, them being against Zero tells us what side they're on. But the fuck is this? Yeah. Who, who are they? Where are we? What's happening? Like... And here's the thing. None it's one of, of those improv scenes where you just start fighting each other and we're like, this is really cool, but unlike improv scenes, this was not made up on the fly. I, like, I will say, none of these things that we've just talked about are deal breakers. No. But they are things that take us out of the moment. Yeah. And so... And given that the moment here is kind of everything. Yeah. It's a problem. So this... That... Coupled with last week's real weird flashback format mm -hmm. is uh, a little bit disruptive for the we're going to sit down and watch this as a movie yeah. feel. A you little know? bit. Like, this wasn't bad, but there was enough yeah. to really kind of pull me out of the, the Everything before last week's episode... Um, I like flowed. definite like flowed really well. I was along for the ride. Da 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 da. I feel like last episode and this episode maybe needed one more draft. In yeah, the but or just some lower thirds to tell us where we are. <laughs> and like, to be fair, I get stuck on things like that. To be fair, that might have been in a production oversight. You know, given again how like COVID yeah. stuff is yeah. preventing certain people from being able to, like, interact together in the same space. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and I mean, you make many, many allowances for things that were made in the time of COVID when you can't have more than a couple people in the studio oh. space together. Like, and production, you do your best. Production just on its own is hard enough. Is very, very difficult. Um, there's a... a Audio, I mentioned at the top of the show, I listen to a lot of horror fiction podcasts. There was um, a big continuity. I love that you refer to it as the top of the show. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> this is a show. <laughs> We're produced. <laughs> no, don't apologize. Goodness I love gracious. it. It makes me feel um, legitimate. <laughs> as we sit here on the futon. On the futon. Um, but no. Um, this is our setting. This is. I'm, I mentioned earlier the that cows are uh, <laughs> one of, uh, I listened to a lot of um, audio fiction podcasts. Uh, one of my favorite ones, the Magnus Archives, actually, yeah, they're very careful about preserving continuity um, because they have an overarching story. And they dropped the ball. I, I won't say where, but they dropped a ball during a pretty important moment that had established continuity. When we finally got to see that scene, they dropped the ball on a very big detail, and everyone noticed. <laughs> and it was one of those things where, <clears throat> as the director was, like, editing the show together, he made a note to himself of, like, oh, I need to put in this sound effect to establish this thing, and totally forgot about it. Oh, shit. And so they exported and published the episode and everybody went, wait, I thought this thing, I thought earlier we established that it had actually happened like this. And they all just went, because oh, it was in the script. Because they are very meticulous about it and it was just a production goof 
on the part of the director. Because sometimes you're just juggling yeah. Oh, a yeah. whole lot of stuff. And stuff, even if you put, like, even if you actively are reminding yourself, like, I have to do this, I have to do this, sometimes you get a finished product out there and you're like, motherfucker. Damn it. <laughs> and there's also a phenomenon, and this isn't necessarily a bad thing or necessarily oh, yeah. what happened here, but there is definitely a thing where fans of something that is established might have, I hesitate to say, a more encyclopedic knowledge of the property than the creators, mm -hmm. but sometimes a greater mind for detail. Someone who's been in it to win it for years and has gone back and watched and rewatched and rewatched or re-listened or re-read or re-whatever the content. Someone who has invested time in researching it for creative works or putting together a wiki or whatever may just have more of that knowledge for detail right off the top of their heads. Mm -hmm. Like, both of us going, he's not dead till we see that sword light up. <laughs> Things like that. And then I think at one point, we both listened okay. to Thrilling Adventure Hour, because Thrilling Adventure Hour is amazing, and y'all should listen to it. But at one point, I can't remember who we were talking to, but one of the writers commented, yeah, the fans who obtained the wiki are the most helpful fans because we absolutely reference that when we have questions about our own <laughs> continuity because it's so meticulously maintained by the fans. Mm -hmm. So it's not like, oh, they don't know what they're talking about. It's, guys, just because we remember every single fan detail for the past 18 years doesn't mean someone who just got their first chance to write the series does or has time to go and look everything up because... God bless the red versus blue wiki. <laughs> it's, uh, Anytime you notice something like that, a oh, wizard did it! <laughs> Santa did it. <laughs> That's what we can use for this show. Santa did it. Um, but yeah, and uh, I'm take that and, and even just like being on the other side of it, like I've I've written stuff before and then like come back to it later and been like. I have no memory of writing this. <laughs> write you know? something, write something three days later that just completely contradicts it. <laughs> have this moment of, how did I do that? All the time. All, All the, the time. time. <laughs> <laughs> so, point being, production is difficult, nobody's perfect, and 2020's real fucking hard, you guys. Nobody's nerfic. Yes, exactly that. But something, something hot dogs. <laughs> if every pork chop were perfect. I was just going to leave it at something, something hot dogs. <laughs> See how many people out there watch Steven Universe. <laughs> but, the, uh, but yeah, no, I mean, again, none of, none of the stu stuff that we've talked about uh, are deal breakers in no, any capacity. No, no, no. I'm still having fun. And it's kind of, I kind of want to go back and rewatch all the episodes leading up to this, knowing that East is evil. And clone. Well, what I'm, what I'm interested in is whether or not, ever was she conscious? Personality? Yeah. Yeah. That's like, the question. Did, like, was that personality cre like, did she straight up have her own autonomy? And it it was just overwritten at the end when the the two of them combined again, or was she playing them from the beginning? Well, and how long would this have had to have been kept up? Because we were introduced to East as established member of the squad, has a rivalry, knows all yeah. these people, and I'm like, okay, so were there how long actually has Shatter Squad been together? Yeah, were there actually like twins or sisters or whatever, and they removed East from the picture and put in a hologram to replace her. Has this Echo just been around for a thousand fucking years? Like, or, like, would she have to, like, clandestinely sneak off, um... For, disappear, for, yeah, and then... And then come back, yeah. Yeah, I, I don't I have know. questions. I feel like she was her own person, and that was the death that we got this episode. Oof. I, I think that's entirely possible. I love it! It's the worst <laughs> possible option, and therefore <laughs> I love it. You like the one that's most like a horror movie scenario. Do you Yay. know me? <laughs> it just makes me happy. I love horrifying shit like that. <laughs> <laughs> 
Like, oh yes, but it turns out they were a copy the whole time, and they had their own personality up until the real one showed up, and I'm like, oh shit, tell me more. <laughs> like, this, this is how I live my life. You like a horror thing. <laughs> no, I like red versus blue. <laughs> it can skirt that line occasionally, but like, like I said, I have questions. I would like those questions answered. Um, well, we just cleared five out of eight, so we've got <laughs> three episodes to wrap up everything. So probably another like forty minutes tops. I'm thinking Which no is wash not in Carolina lots. fight this season. I'm thinking probably no more <laughs> wash this season. Probably not. <laughs> I think we just kind of brought him in to kick him in the face and then leave him in recovery. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, baby. Oh, that's his life. <laughs> Um, but kind of sad for his role in this movie, but <laughs> that is, hey, all right, Shannon, we got you. We have Wash in this movie. It's going to be great. He's like, great. How long do you need me? You know, five minutes. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? Shouldn't be a very long session. <laughs> Just do some three takes and some screaming. It's great. What? <laughs> oh, I never said I was a good person. The, uh, anyway. Yeah, no, this is... <laughs> I, I, three weeks, huh? Yeah. Three weeks left? Oh, boy. Christmas. <sighs> Christmas. Yeah, and right after Christmas. Unless they Santa! decide to do... <laughs> yes. Unless they decide be... to do a break, but I don't think they would do a very long break, much the same way they're doing for Ruby, because it was never meant to have a break in the first place. Tell me, though, that that wouldn't be... Incredible. Two days, Incredible. three days after Christmas, we have an episode with Santa in it. Oh, was it you or Mark uh, on our podcast that that threw out a Santa theory very early on? Oh, Mark, that would be absolutely incredible if in the final episode Santa saved the day. <laughs> Santa out here just two like... days before Christmas. That would be absolutely amazing. <laughs> Santa, Santa out here just like judging all of you humans. All of you. Every single one. All of them. Anyway, we're way off track. That's okay. We are. It's a good time. <laughs> Sorry. It's a good time. I got really excited thinking about Santa showing up at Santa! Christmas. <laughs> I just keep thinking of a plot to eliminate Christmas and that's where my brain lives. I, I was thinking that too. Okay, good. Also an extent. Not just me. Not just me. My own little holiday tradition is watching that every year. It's so good! It's so good! Uh, anyway. Uh, I'm making... You guys can help <laughs> you, you seem confused about that. Are you an echo of someone else? No. Well, that's a convincing answer. I'm convinced. <laughs> Because there are certainly no other famous Megan Salinases out there. Were you gonna... I'm Megan. You guys can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at the Manguin. That's T-H-E-M-E-N-G-U-I-N. I have a YouTube channel called Silver Screams where we talk about horror things. And I also have a Lost Retrospective podcast called No Love Lost where my co-host Will Link loves Lost and I don't. And we talk about it. Yes. I'm also not a copy of a person. <laughs> I feel like I'm going back to my whole you Voltron host thing where I may or may not be a clone. <laughs> I was gonna say, are you sure? Yeah, yeah, no, you're real. <laughs> I love that that's what it takes. It's just the, fine, you're real, get away from me. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> yes, I'm Katie, you can... Our cat's doing fun stuff off camera. <laughs> By fun stuff, I mean, will you just come cuddle with us already? She's very nope, distracting she and hey, adorable. Hey. <laughs> Quit scratching the staircase! <laughs> it's chaos out here. It's just pure chaos. I'm Katie. You can follow me all over the social medias and on Twitch at Kiaxe. That is K-I-A-X-E-T. I also have a podcast that is called On The Point. It is about Overwatch and Overwatch League and... We're off right now because it's the off season, but we might have to record something about all of these trades that are happening because KSF left the Valiant and now he's on the Outlaws and I don't know what to do with my life anymore. So that's <laughs> wild. So, you know, stick around for that. It'll be super fun. 
Yes, if you would like to hear both of us, and also Mark, talk about this episode when we've had a chance to, like, percolate some thoughts and watch it more than once, all that. But if you want the actual analytical take as opposed to the, ah, first impression take, uh, and if you like to hear us talk about Ruby as well, check out Rooster Team Radio. It is on your Spotify's and your iTunes's and your every, everywhere and you your, listen to podcasts. And your anchors. And your anchor. Anchor is where it lives. You can also search for The Rooster Team on the social medias and also on the Tee Public. Everything is under there. Um, I'm still waiting for my shirt that says, I hate the shits you <laughs> like to come in. But that's from our Tee Public store and I regret nothing because it's fucking hilarious. Be patient with the post office. Be patient with the post office. It's more that I just keep refreshing the tracking and going. <laughs> is it here yet? Internet? Is it here yet? Internet? <laughs> Give me the answers I want, internet! <laughs> well, that's why. So tune in to hear us talk about this episode in a bit more detail because that's super fun to do. If you would like to support this channel, first of all, please do not feel obligated. We have day jobs. We are doing just fine. This this is the side fun project. This is not the main anything. <laughs> so please do not feel obligated, but if you would like to, we have a Patreon that gets you all of our Rooster Teeth content early. We have a Ko-fi if you just want to throw a couple bucks our way. <laughs> Buy some treats for the crazy cat that lives in the household. I love her. Uh, we take commissions, not request commissions, and supporting our sponsor supports us. So head to fredhebakes.com and use coupon code KIACOOKIES for 20% off your entire order. Hit all those nice little buttons down there. Make sure to hit this one, but not this one. Nobody likes this one. Everyone likes this one. So make sure you hit this one. And you know, the like and the subscribe and the ding and all that good stuff. <laughs> and the ding. Always like the ding. Like, subscribe, ding. Yes, like, subscribe, ding. All that good stuff. And as always, we end with the important things. Where... A mask. Wear a mask. Wear a mask. Wear a mask. Wear a mask when you go outside your home. You cannot account for the movements of other people. You cannot account for other people's decisions. You can account, and you cannot ever guarantee when you're going to run into somebody else. Because again, not being able to account for other people's movements. You can account for your own movements and your own decisions. So wear a mask. It protects you a little, and it protects everyone else a lot. And that's the point. Support your essential workers. They don't really get the choice to stay home. So, you know, social distance when you can, be kind, be patient. Holiday season is rough for retail anyway. And then there's also this. So, you know, support them, be kind, be patient. Support your frontline medical workers. They are doing everything they can and then some. Uh, support the post office, buy stamps, be patient with the post office. They're already suffering from all the hanky shit coming down from on high. And also, it's a busy time of year, so, you know, patience is good. Leave a little gift out for your post person, because they're good humans. Uh, yes. Black lives matter. Black trans lives matter. Black LGBTQIA lives matter. Black lives matter. That's not gonna change. That's not gonna change. If you are protesting, protest safely. Wear a mask. Take care of each other. If you are not protesting, support your protesters. Because there's still things to protest about, as it turns out, I say, living in Los Angeles. Thank you for voting. Thank you for voting. Thank you for voting. Thank you for voting. If you're in Georgia, we're going to need you to do it again. In the runoff election in January. So if you're in Georgia, please vote in the runoff. And regardless, thank you for voting. And also remember, if you're a Trump supporter, you can fuck off. <laughs> you're, uh, you're not welcome in this space. Because, and I explain this for the Ruby crowd, I'm gonna explain this for the red versus blue crowd, because Trump made it very clear that he thinks that people like me on the LGBTQIA spectrum, and people like my lovely roommate here, who are people of color, don't deserve rights. Like, he doesn't think we deserve rights, he doesn't really think we're human, and you know, that's, that's some bullshit. And also completely inaccurate. And if you are supporting him, either you agree with him, or that wasn't a deal breaker. So, there's none of this, well, I don't like that, but I support him anyway, because no, if you support him, you support these fucking policies. So, there's no room for that. There's no room for that hate, and there's no room for that malicious apathy in this space. So if you're a Trump supporter, there's the fucking door. Bye. You can leave. The rest of us will hang out here. 
safely socially distanced and all wearing masks, <laughs> but nonetheless, we'll hang out here. Take care of each other. Take care of yourself. Take care of each other. Wear a mask. Make good decisions. Please make good decisions, like wearing a mask. Because really, guys, that's the only way we're going to get through this, is if we take care of each other. And remember that we love you. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time. Bye! He's dead, Jim. <laughs>